Hi, this is Lady Lex UK and this is a tutorial for dreams. Today I'm going to be showing you a stepping stone puzzle. This is quite an old traditional puzzle that you see in many games. The idea is to step on these um, stepping stones in sequence, you get the correct sequence, the door will open. If you get the wrong sequence, it will reset and you have to start again. So let's have a look at it in action. Here is my player. So um, here are my stepping stones. So if I step on that, nothing happens. No, no, there we go. So that's the, the first stepping stone that I need to step on. And now it's turned off. So go back. I've now got to pick, there we go. So uh, I've got a choice of one or three. Let's go three. Yes, that was the correct one. And the door opens. There we go. So how is this done? Okay, so we have our four stepping stones. Let's reset it before us. Four stepping stones, a puppet, and a door. I borrowed this one from the Dreamverse. This is from uh, Jay Combat. This is his door or her door. Um, and it is uh, two separate pieces, this. It's, there's a door and a, a frame. Right, here is our microchip. And this is the logic that runs this puzzle. And it might look a little bit complicated, but it's actually pretty straightforward. And I will run you through every single one of these. Right then, let's start off with the trigger zones. Right, I've got four of them. Here they are here, zone one, zone two, zone three, and zone four. Stick your trigger zone on top of your platform. Now be careful when you're putting these down. Uh, try to get them so they are inside the, uh, the boundaries of your stepping stone and make sure you turn your camera all the way around to make sure that you've placed it correctly in 3D space because sometimes it can look right from one angle and it isn't really. So there's zoom, zone one and that's the first stone I have to step on and then that's the second one, that's the third one and that's the fourth one. Then we've got these four counters. These counters um, are the default, they add it up to one, so they can be one or zero. And what we're going to do is um, when these are activated, we're going to add one to these counters. So these counters are full when the um, when you've stepped on these correctly. And it's going to do various things like it's going to make sounds, it's going to light up, etc, etc. Right, so let's start off with our first zone. So once you've stepped on the first correct correct uh, stepping stone, we're going to wire the detect to our counter. And now that counter is now on. Right, for the second one, instead of going just directly and, and straight to the counter, we're going to check to see if the first one is on. Have they stepped on stepping stone one first? So we're going to use an AND gate. So we say counter is full and we detect the player. Then we're going to fill this counter. Okay, And we do the same with the next one. We're going to look, check. Is this one full? Into there. Detect. Into there. If both are true, into there. Counter is full. And the same with this next one. So we're looking at checking if three is full. Into this AND gate tech zone into the AND gate into the counter right now we're going to um, set our resets so this time we've got a NOT gate and we've got a NOT gate connected to this so if 2 is not full into this AND gate and then you step on zone 3 so you detect to the here to the AND gate so if it's two is not on and you step on three, then we are going to reset, we're going to go all the way around, reset number one. And the same here. So if you step on there we go, so if counter three is not full into there and you step on four into there then this time we're going to reset one and two 
There we go. That's what that's going to do. So that's that's the resetting mechanism for those. Obviously, if you've got more stepping stones, you're going to need more of these and your more resets. But it just follows a normal logical pattern as you go through. Now, here are our keyframes. What these do is these light up our stepping stones. So this keyframe uh, lights up this one. And the way you do that, I will just use, use show up, uh, animate keyframe, stamp it down. Um, so you can select your stepping stone and then you just move this across I think about 45 45 is about right 44 45 there we go that's about right and then press record and then you can move that in and then you can link that up now you link the keyframe up to the counter for each of these so for zone one which is this platform over on the far right so we want to find the one whoops we want to find the one that is the fourth one there it goes there we are so we link that counter to that keyframe there we go so those are the four keyframes then um the fourth zone the final one also links to the door and all you do here is you for the keyframe you just move your door in position and record and then in its tweak menu, I've just got a 3.5 second power up. So that door will swing open. And I've also got keep changes, so it will remain open forever. So there's that keyframe. I've also got a sound effect for that door opening, also linked to four. So it opens with a nice noise. And as these counters are full, I've got little ping noises that are also connected to these counters. There we go. Boom, 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 boom. And there you have it. Now this can be adapted. So um, you don't have to have platforms. You could have levers. Uh, you don't have to have a door opening. All sorts of things could happen, you know. Um, stairs could appear. Lights could come on. Um, all sorts of things could happen. It is entirely up to you how you use this in your game. But that's the, the basis, the basic um, code for getting this type of thing to work. And that's how you do a lot of if this, then this type statements. Okay, I hope that was useful for you. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in your dreams.